Kiwi parents spend daylight hours in their den, taking turns to incubate the enormous egg. To recover the egg, Ian must crawl into the burrow. Careful management is critical to the chick's survival. Ian is well aware that two pairs of powerful legs armed with sharp claws are very close. It's nearly 10 times larger than a chicken's egg, and handling with care is critical. So what we're looking for in general is just any cracks in the egg surface. Um, if there's a crack in there, we need to transport it basically crack side up because we don't want anything spilling out of the egg. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can see, see that air cell. Yeah. So that also tells me that this is the egg's upright. So basically, we just want to smooth the ride out as we can. Yeah. No other bird carries an egg of such enormous size in relation to its body mass. By the time it's ready to be laid, the egg is so large that the mother's body doesn't even have space for food. The egg also has a higher proportion of yolk than other bird eggs. It can sustain the chick for up to 80 days before it hatches, more than twice the usual incubation period for a bird. On average, it takes five or six days to fully hatch. The hatching process is slow because, unlike most other chicks, kiwi lack an egg tooth, a lump on the top of their beak to help them break the shell. But that extra time in the egg is one of the secrets of the kiwi's success. Most bird chicks are born blind and helpless. Kiwi chicks emerge developed and able to fend for themselves. The kiwi's long gestation period gave it a head start over bird species hatching helpless chicks. But did it sacrifice its ability to fly in order to carry these uniquely massive eggs? Because kiwi don't fly, they don't have wings, but they do actually have sort of wings. They don't do, they have a vestigial wing. There's our wing tucked under there. With a tiny claw. A tiny little claw right on the tip there next to it. It's got something very unusual that no other bird has, right? Mm, very unusual. So kiwi nostrils are right at the tip of this bill here, of this beak. If you remember this. And a little oval just here. That's the end of her nostril. So there's two hollow tubes that run across the top there. So they'll push those nostrils underground and sniff and snuffle and find their dinner. Back on the west coast of New Zealand's South Island, Department of Conservation Ranger Ian Graham and threatened species ambassador Nicola Torki are headed back into the Okarito wetlands. Two Rui Kiwi chicks, who had been living in a predator-free sanctuary, have come of age. They are now old enough to defend themselves against predators and can be released into their home forest. Six years ago, it was extremely critical. We had probably less than 200 individuals remaining on the planet. And in the last six years, we've been able to more than double the population through the Operation Nest Egg program. We're certainly not out of the woods, and they're still gonna need all the, the kind of TLC we can give them but it's really nice to be part of a program that is on the way up. By looking at the kiwi as a bird that tried to become a mammal, its unique biology starts to make sense. There he goes. Once it flew to New Zealand, the kiwi followed the example of the moa and eventually lost the use of its wings. Here we go. New Zealand's national symbol was originally a visitor that decided to stay. Thankfully, the Rowi population is stabilising and this remarkable bird's chances are looking up. They 
are only found here in New Zealand. They are like nothing else in the world. 